How did this opportunity for you to kind of be a, a guest coach with the Jazz for Summer League come about? Well, of course, like uh, I'm, I'm used to talk about all basketball in Finland. For us, it's an opportunity. For me as a person, you know, visited here in, on January, saw so how how the things are. It's, I'm, I'm really excited to be here every day, but also build the relationship between uh, Finnish basketball and and uh, jazz. I hopefully for uh, for years. Tell us uh, when you came to Utah in January. Was, was that your first time here? I, I presume. Yeah. Um, what What was it that you kind of noticed about the Jazz and, and how they run, and, and especially talking to Lowry, kind of what stands out about this organization? Um. Before that, when you watch their playing, I think the team was super fresh and they play basketball nice, uh, fresh way. But the main thing was that there was a chemistry and you know, they played together. And then when you walk in this building, I think you understand why it happens. The things what the what the front office has built here, together with the coach, everybody involved here, restaurant people, stuff like that. It, it's a different. And I think that's the that's the main reason that people are happy, smiling when they walk into the building. And when you're happy, where you are, you can develop you as a person, as a basketball player. And I think that's the story behind Laurie. Stylistically, what what about the Jazz made it such a good fit with Lowry? Well, I I go back to the previous answer that first of all we, we we should not talk about basketball. You need to feel that the people believe in you. You need to feel that you are in the place that you can be successful. And uh, I don't I, I think you know many things clicked. Of course, the Eurobasket was something that he kind of you know started it, and it was after five years with the national team. So I think there was a lot of a uh, a lot of days and months that he was waiting for to get back to the back to the national team games, and then everything leaked. So he he kind of uh, transformed it to here. But like I said, you gotta feel that you're in the place that people believes in you, and that's the that's the main thing. And big uh, credits for the coaching staff, especially for that. When you look at Lowry, where do you think that his biggest area of improvement can come going forward? Well, sky's the limit. You know, I think the main thing is that he's super hard worker, and and uh, you know the things he. If you look at him in the first year with the Bulls and compare what he does right now, you cannot imagine like how much he has developed. So there's a, there's multiple ways. I think also basketball is changing, like that. You know, he's a modern player that he can be the big man handling the ball. You already saw that we used him as a guard, in the in the previous Eurobasket. So I think you know, in Europe we call this kind of a Swiss knife that you know. Can do everything. I think that's the that's the goal for. for what you call that? Swiss knife. You know, we call it like a Swiss knife that you can do basically with every knife. Okay. Swiss knife that you know everything with it. Do you recall there being a moment where obviously we've talked to Lowry about you know him feeling like going into Eurobasket last year, he just felt different. He felt more kind of ready to take mm -hmm. things on. Do you recall there being a moment where you noticed like kind of a tangible difference in the way he was playing? Hmm. There was not a not a moment. I think uh, the summer was perfect for us because actually we played those few games in June, where we have to win, and uh, those were not probably the best ones for us. But we kind of uh, started the process earlier. Then there was a break. We had another few qualifiers for the World Cup, and then getting into Euro. So it was not that you know the first game you have to be there, and also like I think Lowry has had a time to get used to the basketball over there. I, it was my first tournament too as a head coach, so I don't remember too many, <laughs> too many d days outside of the games. But I just remember that in, then in Prague, when the when the round started, for some reason he just picked up that he's better than the he's he's almost all the time, all the time the best player on the court, and it's it's that was impressive. I apologize for the ignorant question, but how popular is basketball in Finland? Well, it's rising. I think you know. National team has started it when we went to play against the Team USA 2014 in Bilbao, opening game of the World Cup. Don't look at the result. <laughs> um, there was 10,000 fans in the stands, and I, but I think you know some of them they were not you know coming to watch basketball. They went to watch the team, which was like something new to follow and be part with it. Um, we have a job to do because we want to. Do, we we don't have a like a lot of players. 
I think you know that's the biggest challenge that we need to compete with the ice hockey in Finland, and now football is big. But uh, but I think you know we're getting better all the time, and like I said, getting better players from our academies, better coaches, more coaches. That's the job, and and it's rising. Related question: How popular is Lowry in market uh, in, in Finland, and how famous is he? Well, I think you know right now. It's hard to, you should never, you know, measure like who's bigger and what, but like for sure from one of the, the main phases in Finland, all sports. And uh, I think he does it extremely well because he doesn't want to be in the spotlight. He does it his, his, like he is, and that's why people like him. A related question, how can someone like Lowry and the success he's had kind of help grow the game over in Finland? I think it's a simple story. We, kids, especially in the nowadays, they need a role models. The the thing is that maybe 20 years ago, when you watch the small kids in the school, you know, having a break, they play hockey and they wanna be something big in the hockey. Now you see kids throwing the ball between the classes, and I wanna be Laurie or somebody else. So I, that's something that we cannot do as you know professionals. That's something that you know only the the role models and idols they can they can touch. Spoke about this being an opportunity for you being here. What do you hope to bring back from this experience? A uh, lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, different ways of doing. Uh, during my tour in January, uh, after I, I spent a week here, I went to many of the colleges to see NCAA and, and the coaches there. And you know, that's the best way for a coach to learn, see other coaches. And I need to say that I'm super thankful that the people here are very open because that's always something that you maybe think that you know they're closed and but sharing and you're always always uh, free to talk I uh, I've been you know surprised do you leave with more X's and O's more drills or more culture items me personally like yeah for the, when you take when you go to these visits do you come back for finished basketball and come with more X's and O's type things more like on floor practice drill things or more culture items on how things are run? I think we, we, we coaches, uh, of course, every coach, especially in basketball, is a fan of X's and O's because that's the funny thing, that's the romantic thing to see at Twitters and what other plays, but you don't do anything with it if you don't know how to teach it. So, like the teaching point to see somebody, skill coach is there with the, with the guys, you know, teaching the fundamentals, how they how they teach, it's not even uh, what they teach, it's like how they do it. And, and uh, honestly, like uh, the, the biggest thing, you know, I always follow is that, you know, how they treat humans, how they teach, how is the, how is the relationship built in a different places. Okay. Some exist on those